Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast once again. This is now episode 87, entitled, Could Plutio Be Your All-in-One Business Software? It was published on Thursday, the 2nd of August, 2018. My name's Nathan Wrigley from pictureandword.co.uk, a small web development agency based in the north of England, and I'll be joined in a little while by David Wormsley from davidwormsley.com so that we can have our pre-interview discussion, which this week is entitled, Does Your Client Need a Blog? And we also have our post-interview ending fact, which this week is called, Half of Small Businesses Spend Nout on SEO. I think you have to be English, particularly Northern English, to realise that the word nout is slang for nothing. Anyway, please go over to the wpbuilds.com website and if you listen to the podcast episode there, be sure to click on the buttons underneath the podcast player. We particularly like it when you go and share the episode and as I've been saying for many weeks now, if you do feel inclined to leave us a, an iTunes review, we're most grateful for that because it seems to be one of the most effective ways for spreading this podcast throughout the known universe. Okie dokie. The other thing we'd like to do is to say go over to wpbuilds.com forward slash deals where you'll be able to get coupon codes for plugins such as Toolset, Blog Vault, Malcare, MainWP and get a proportion of the price off. Go and check it out. wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. And also if you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash webinars, you can see that we've got a webinar in the future with Corey Mass, who was on last week's podcast. Um, and he's got a Kanban plugin, which we're going to be showing you in September, so you could sign up for that. Okay, after the discussion with David and I, in just a moment, we'll be talking to Leo Bassam, who is the founder of a SaaS app called Plutio. Now, Plutio is a bit of an all-in-one business management software. It does invoices and proposals and timesheets and all the sort of good stuff that you need to run your business. I kind of converted to it a few months ago and I'm a, I'm a real advocate of it, frank, frankly. I really like it. They've had a lot of updates since we recorded the podcast, um, which make it even better than it sounds in the interview. They've added proposals and uh, white labeling and things like that. Anyway, I, I use it. It's my go-to software now for a whole bunch of stuff to to run my business and I, I really really would like to uh, sort of recommend it but you know listen to the podcast and go and try it for a 14-day trial and decide for yourself right let's get on with the podcast shall we thanks for joining us yet again hello and today's discussion is do website clients need a blog Nathan and I alluded to this topic actually in one of the show's ending facts where we were talking well, it's one of our much beloved mind blowing facts, which <laughs> claimed that seven out of 10 customers find a business via a blog. And well, we were talking, weren't we, about the fact that we, we have generally set up blogs for clients because it's an easy thing to do, but they're not generally using them and could be doing more harm to their reputation than good. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I um, I without doubt always set up a blog if if well unless there's a specific request not to uh you know i always offer it and mostly the clients say yeah that sounds like a good idea but you're absolutely right i can honestly put um one hand's worth of fingers of people who in any way shape or form of have, have lived up to the idea of doing blogging yeah well, I find it really frustrating. We used to do that because, of course, it's WordPress and you get a blog that goes with it and it's like offering value to the client. And certainly, you know, most of my work was coming through my colleague and, you know, she was fairly new to WordPress, so she loved to offer this. Um, but, yeah, they haven't kept it up. But even so, even the people who do do the blogging, mm. you know, we've never had a proper conversation about, you know how to do this well so they're doing a lot of work and not getting a lot of traction for it yeah it's um just to sort of preface this a little bit whenever mm. i because of my experience of the fact that 
Um, virtually nobody lives up to the commitment to blog. Mm. I I do spell that out a little bit. I do explain that, you know, if you are going to do this, there is quite a lot of work in it. You might want to consider setting somebody aside for an hour or two, uh, a month or whatever it is that you want to produce. And then I kind of then say, look, on the off chance that you do do this, it might be a good idea to keep dates in and things like that. And mm. in the in the permalink structure, put those dates in. But if you're mm. probably not and you fear that your years might go by between updating things, I, I advise that really you just put the post title after the um, domain name and remove any trace of address, uh, sorry, dates from the 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 single post um, template. Yeah. I don't know if you do the same kind of thing. Yeah, I have done this, and I've seen you know bloggers as well who do this. But you know, for the for the blogs that I look at, because time is really important, then it drives me nuts mm. <laughs> when I don't see a date there mm. because yes. I know I'm in a yes. blog. Yes. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm only really going to invest my time in this one if it's up to date because yes. it's about technology. So I'm out. So I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be true to most clients, really. So maybe that is a solution. Yeah, I mean, it just I I I know exactly what you mean. When you go and you're looking for time specific content, mm. I very often it ir- is irritating if you can't find the uh, the date. But also, if you go to a blog. Uh, that hasn't been updated in a couple of years and that and you're searching on their blog to see what their business is like that doesn't mm. that doesn't really foster a, a great feeling of no. uh, this business is you know doing all the right things so it's a bit, a bit of a difficult one what i tend to do when i'm doing searching is use the tools in google because mm. they keep a, a track of when things were published even if you don't on the website you know they'll they'll know that this was published on such and such a date so i yeah. use the was published in the last month if I'm trying to find something time specific. Um, and often in our industry, looking for tutorials and things like that, it is quite important that you're finding one that was written within the last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, so getting back to the original point of, you know, do do clients need a blog? I think I think my, my answer would be probably most of my clients don't. But mm. I think probably on balance, if there's any truth in that seven out of ten people find a business via the blog then then yes absolutely they should have them yeah and i think that's what and i think most clients know about blogging being a good thing which means that some of those have been asking for them anyway you Mm. know but but uh, i just on its own it's really tricky without all the knowledge i i did i was telling you didn't i that i did a numerous sites for the same company in fact we, we've redone some of their sites so there has been a lot of business of them and the first job i did for them was to add a blog the right. wordpress to their right. html site <clears throat> and i did that and they never blogged after that even though they specifically required me to do this job for that <laughs> and uh, and it's it's only this um last time that i thought I, i'm really gonna have to take this seriously because they were saying, oh, we'll have the blog again. And I reminded them that on other sites, they didn't keep them up to date mm. and that they needed a strategy. And then that made me realize this has got to be, uh, I think, another project in itself, a yep. blog. Yep. Or there's got to be, if you do, instead of being just an add-on because it's there in WordPress, I feel that there's so much you can do with a blog for start understanding the basics of seo so mm. I, i've got an author who do blogs regularly all the time in fact i'm going to be doing another job for her soon but she gets no traction from it because just she doesn't understand the basics of well it's really only going to show up if her titles are going to be things that people are going to type in google searching yeah already yeah, yeah 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 so that's a conversation just the basics of the seo with people so if they don't get that then you you probably need to invest some time and then all the other things that go with it which we've got a lot smarter with blogs now so we we have certain pop-ups we have context aware sidebars these days don't we depending mm-hmm. on whether you visited the site before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. social sharing buttons all of these lots of technology that goes with that build as well that needs to be discussed whether you need it and what is your call to action you know yes so if a blog post manages to attract somebody in but then is just simply an isolated blog post mm-hmm. uh, is that actually doing your business any benefit i suppose if if you're in the business of just giving away content for free and you're just I don't know, an academic or something, and you simply want to impart knowledge, that's fine. But if yeah. you're using your uh, blog as a as a tool to get people onto your site, then 
crackers not to have something there to encourage them to look a little bit further and yeah that's that's typically the case um of, of a lot of these things i think you know it's a half half thought through th- thought through thing um yeah. and they believe that uh, if you build it they will come well if i blog regularly then yeah. they'll come and uh, absolutely you're right you've got to have the right seo approach and i think to be honest with you i think these days if you are going to take blogging seriously enough that you're going to spend a few hours each month doing it you might as well spend the time learning about the seo the seo yeah. requirements before you begin and that would be a as I said, most of the people that I build websites for, it's pretty obvious immediately that they're never going to use it. Some yeah. of them even come back to me and say, can we switch it off? Because it doesn't look very good now. Um, and and I think if anybody does take it seriously, it would be incumbent upon me to go back to them quite quickly and say, look, why don't you get yourself a bit of SEO training? There's a few courses on online that you can do for a few quid. Uh, and it might might give you a bit more benefit than than the stuff you're writing at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Just recently, I've <clears throat> decided it's my responsibility to just point out what can what typically happens to mm. people who say they want to blog, you know, rather than just deliver it and say, yeah, you've got your value because yep. <clears throat> for that long term relationship, really, just for that kind of building that trust, you know. Yeah, we. Um, um, I, I sometimes sort of repurpose the blog to, you know, to add content onto the homepage or something like that. Yes. Um, just as a way of. Well, so for example, the blog could end up being, um, oh, I'm just trying to dr- drag one out of my head, a company that I'm dealing with at the moment that does building work. And the blog now is basically a repository of the, the jobs that they've done. Mm-hmm. So, so the featured image is a picture of the property they built and the body text with a couple of additional fields is, is just content about what they did. And so the blog has been repurposed as a way of them putting more content on the website, not for the purposes of attracting new business, but for the purposes of when people have landed on the site to see what they've done already and to, to notice that they've got authority in this industry. Yeah. Do you know, do, do you think that might even be better for SEO? You know, it's, it's ironic really, isn't it? That we might offer blogs so easily because what is the number one problem that we have? And that's getting content off clients to yeah. build their sites. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, any content they can produce, you know, might be better placed and maybe even better for SEO if that kind of content was placed on pages rather than blog posts. I'm not sure how search engines view a blog post that has date metadata with it. Yeah, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good point. I mean, presumably there is a benefit for regularly releasing content. Um, let's say that if you did it every single month and it was regular, presumably Google would take that as an indication of some authority if the language that we were using was consistent within a certain field. Um, mm. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I think if unless they are going to commit to it, you are better off, I think, telling them, demonstrating to them how to how to build pages. And obviously with yeah. the advent of things like page builders, it's easy to duplicate a page that looks exactly like the other one. So in effect... It does feel a little bit like a blog post, but, you know, without the RSS benefits. But let's be honest, how many people are going to subscribe to your your builders or accountants RSS feed? <laughs> yes. Yeah, not so many. And, and I wonder, you know, you say updated content is good for, but also that applies to pages. So even if yep. you were regularly changing yep. some of the content on your regular pages, surely that would have just as much as a boost as maybe adding a new um, blog post article. Well, and also you get that you get that fine grain control of it, don't you? Whereas you mm-hmm. you know typically with a with a blog post there'll be a, a body field and a title, and you'd be able to put mm-hmm. a few images in, and and the structure is set, um, mm-hmm. and you don't get any sort of flair with that. Whereas if you are able to leverage a page builder and do all this in pages, then mm-hmm. um, then you can make it look a little bit nicer as well. Without yeah. it. But then I suppose the, the, the drawback of that is that you have to spend time doing that. Whereas <laughs> if you've just got some blog content that you can w- whip out and type it into the, the body and click save and it already looks quite nice. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the bottom line is if it's working, if, if this statistic is true and seven out of 10 businesses are, are, are finding traffic through the blog, and they've got good call to actions and they've thought about how to convert from the blog over to the telephone or the subscribe to our email list. Or, In other words, if they've figured out a way to keep that going, then you should have a blog without a doubt. Yeah. But if you're you not, not think- going to put the time in, probably not worth it. 
Yeah, I agree with that. And also, I'm just thinking as well that I might be just trying to get a product together. I don't know what it will look like that will just be making the blog its own unit, something that people can buy in so I can give it proper care. I think um, I think that's probably the way that I'll pitch it in the future. I, again, as as is so often the case, when you and I talk these things through, just mm. it just distills a few things in my head. And I either say at the minute, don't have a blog if you're not going to update it. Or I say, you know, if you really are going to update it, let's have a blog. And I, I haven't really pitched it as a, here's an additional service that you could have bolted on and we'll take care of it. What? I'm just so stupid. But that, <laughs> I think that seems like a good idea. Yeah. But you know what, though? I, I mean, I did kind of phrase it this way to somebody and they'd never come back. You know, for that. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> but, but that, I guess, did the job because, you know, it just tells me that they wouldn't have carried on with their blog. So mm. I guess it worked. Yeah. 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 Ah, right. Well, we've done quite a bit, actually. We've probably done about 15 minutes on this. Is there anything more you want to add? No, I think we've done this. Subject. Yes. So in short blogs who knows maybe have one maybe not i don't i don't know we, we don't <laughs> <Exactly>. know <laughs> right okay we'll go over to the interview in that case hello and welcome to the interview part of the podcast today i have on the line somebody uh, from not the traditional background of wordpress themes plugins and so on i've got somebody on the line because i am using uh, a product that they provide it's a SaaS app called Plutio, and its creator is Leo Bassam. Hello, Leo. Hello, and thanks for having me, Nathan. You are most welcome. Yeah, uh, the, the reason that I've got Leo on is because I came across his product, oh, I'm going to say about six months ago now. Uh, per perhaps that's wrong, uh, because Leo um, put his product on AppSumo, uh, and we all know what that means. You know, you get um, a sudden flurry of interest, lots and lots of people asking lots and lots of questions. Um, of which I was one and decided to give it a go and ended up using it, actually ditching a ton of other products. So that's where this is coming from, the fact that I use it. And so hopefully uh, during our discussion, you'll discover if this is something that you want to use. Um, Leo, tell us about Plutio. What is it? What's it for? What does it do? And all of that good stuff. Fantastic. Well, Plutio is an all-in-one business management um, designed specifically for us freelancers and small teams, because I believe that is, you know, we, we're underserved. Most of the tools that are already out there is targeted towards or focused towards teams and big businesses. Um, and that's where Plutio focuses is. It gives you access to projects, tasks, invoices, time tracking, Basically everything you will ever need to manage your entire business from A to Z in one centralized and intuitive platform. Yeah, it's. Um, I think that kind of nails it really nicely. Um, I'm using it at the moment um, and looking at the UI at this very moment. It's really clean. It's really modern. I think you've done a fantastic job, by the way, um, of making it you know clutter free and really simple to use. Um, and you've got the, the option to just set up ordinary tasks. So you can have tasks disassociated from anything. So that might be a replacement for something like Todoist or, you know, Wanderlist or something like that, uh, in that you, you go into your tasks and you, you just invent them and they're all ad hoc and they don't have to be connected to anything. But it, but then you can sort of step in and go a bit more granular. So, for example, there's a there's a next section called projects um, in the in the menu structure, and you click on that, and you can just create uh, a project for anything you like. So it might be you know your kitchen, building your kitchen, or in my case, it's it's clients. I've decided to project by client, so I've got the name of this client, the name of this client, and then when you click in that, you get a whole bunch of options to you can look at the calendar of all the tasks, you can set up timesheets, and so on and so forth. But it but it doesn't end there. Because I think you're underselling yourself here a bit, uh, Leo, to be honest, <laughs> because then it moves on to invoicing. And although I confess I haven't used the invoicing functionality, it's built right in. What payment processes have you got going on in there? Um, Stripe, PayPal and a bank, into, uh, not integration, but bank option. OK, uh, I've not really used that just because the, the incumbent software that I use is, is just I've, I'm paid up. Um, so I might as well just carry on using it. But you can send your invoices. Um, you've got a calendar to overview everything. You've got an inbox, uh, a bit like a chat functionality where you, you and your clients can interact. Um, and and it, the list goes on. Basically, it's a very, very powerful little tool. Um, how on earth did you decide <laughs> to build a tool 
which if you like, I know that you've just described it's uh, it's for freelancers and so on but this this space of task management and calendars and all of that it feels like it's like it's really crowded already um right. why why did you decide to do this knowing that you were going into such a crowded little space um well i've been freelancing for almost 10 years ever since i was 15 and um one of the things i've, I've truly struggled with is finding a tool that does everything I need in one place mm. and it's intuitive enough for me and for my clients to use without me spending a lot of time teaching them how to use it. And um, basically I couldn't find anything that just meets my workflow. I had to adapt my workflow to the tools workflow or, or the way the tool is structured or um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and so um, also to add on to, to add on that, most of the tools were designed for teams. So I, I wasn't, I didn't feel sort of welcome in a sense or um, or my, their ideal customer, if that makes sense. So I, I felt a little bit like an outsider because they always send me emails about, oh, get your team on board, um, mm -hmm. you know, start collaborating with your team. But I don't have a team yet. I'm, I'm, I'm just a freelancer trying to um, run my small business. And some of the tools that I found at that time um, that could have that that had few tools built into one, um, basically didn't. I forgot the word now, Nathan. Oh, I... <laughs> it's okay. We don't mind. Let's think oh. our way around it. They don't. Uh, they don't supply. They don't have enough. They don't. No. What is the word? It was there. It was there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. Um, just just go to the next point. <laughs> Oh God! It, it was a very good point, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it will get to me. Um, yeah, so I, I struggled to grow the business. Oh, actually, yeah, that's the one. So the majority of them actually um, focused on a specific sector of the of the creative industry of of the freelancers. Gotcha. So on photographers, or um, actually, the majority were built towards photographers. And so um, I wasn't a photographer; I was a web designer, um, and I, I used the. I tried to use these tools, but also I, I couldn't really get them to work however way I want because they were focused towards a different sort of um, type of a freelancer, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And 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 so on. And so that the idea behind Plutio comes out frustration of just I really need something to help me out um, to get to grow my business. And, and so Plutio was designed in a way um, with flexibility and uh, build in mind. So. When you sign up for Plutio, obviously, you, you can customize it. You can add custom fields to make it work however way you work. You can add, um, you can change the colors. You can you can do quite a lot of stuff to really make Plutio as personalized and customized to your workflow. Um, maybe. I didn't actually know that. Before we started the call, uh, I had a little bit of a talk with Leo and we discussed his background and, and the fact that he'd been a web developer. I didn't actually know that. And so maybe that's why this fits me so well, because... Um, I am a web designer. That's what I do for a living. And so it t ticks all the boxes. Basically, what I need is, um, you know, I need tasks because my memory is hopeless and I've got no chance of remembering things that I'm, I'm going to be doing. By the way, I should say that you you display the tasks in a, in a variety of ways, one of which is my preferred way of looking at things. And if you hadn't have had this, I, there's no way I would have bought it because you've got that Kanban view where, you know, imagine like Trello, um, there's everything in little horizontal columns and you can drag it to the next stage. So you can have, you know, over here is to do, over here is started, um, in progress, completed, whatever and you can drag them around and so that that I really like um projects like I said is in there that's one of the primary things that I have you know I've got five or six things going on all at once and so I can manage those and have separate tasks for those and like I said invoices that they're the three things that I need and you do all of that um plus the the sort of integration with chat yeah so that's really interesting the fact that your background is exactly the same as mine you were scratching your own itch that's why you did it did you yes. um did you do this when you built it? Um, did you do it with a team or was it just you? H how did all that work? Um, I didn't have the resources to have a team. It was completely me. Um, I tried to learn how to develop and um, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. However, I learned HTML and CSS very well. And that basically helped build my vision into something physical, if that makes sense. So I, mm -hmm. I, I brought my ideas that they were in my mind and coded them into 
prototypes, fully working prototypes, not not functional in a way that you know they have a backend and connected database, etc. But you could actually use them to like, um, you know, look around of how the app would actually yeah. Yeah. Uh, work. And so that really helped to to put my ideas into into perspective and show it to the actual you know people who would be help me to develop it. Um, I tried I tried to save up money to hire a developer to do this and. Um, and that's how it works. So I, I sort of brought in people to help me out, develop the idea, but from savings and from, um, you know, the, the, the revenue that used to come from my design studio, put it back into investing into Plutio. And over the past sort of three years, it, you know, here, here we are um, yeah. with a team of three and it's, it's growing. What um what what tools have you and your team now your your team actually used? What are you using? Um, so for example, what sort of framework, JavaScript framework or whatever? Because that that's the sort of technical detail we like around here. Um, <laughs> what kind of things are you using? What where's your hosting held and all of that kind of stuff? Um, and the a very important question, I suppose, which you may or may not be able to answer, as we're recording this in April, the legislation doesn't come into effect until the twenty fifth of May. But um, because you're holding data about people, have you uh, have you given much thought to GDPR? Of course, yes. We are actually working on it as we speak. Uh, okay, so get back to the sort of original question. What did you mention? You were using React or something like that? Yes, we're actually using React and Meteor. Um, and we're using a couple of different tools that helps us keep, you know, track of um, activities and keeping the the platform up and running. Um, and it, when it comes to server-wise, we're using Meteor Galaxy. Okay. Um, Galaxy Meteor, and it's designed for you know to, to run Meteor um, built apps. One of the um, one of the things which would terrify me if I was in your position, because I I manage my my own server, and you know, occasionally stuff goes wrong. Um, and it's but it's really trivial for me to to fix that, and I know how many websites are on there, and I can communicate with those people in an instant, really, and, and comfort them that don't worry, I'm on it. It's it's coming back in a minute. Um, one of the things that would trouble me endlessly if I was building a, a SaaS app and people are paying for it on a monthly basis is that thing, that moment where something goes wrong, you commit something and it breaks, or the uh, you know, or the, the the server, the infrastructure that's serving up the the app goes down. Have you have you had any of that, or have you been lucky so far? We we actually had it in the worst in the worst times. Um, oh. <laughs> we, yeah, um, when we launched AppSumo. Um, I did a live webinar and we had about 700, 800 people viewing us live. <laughs> and, and I was, um, I was just, you know, giving an overview of Plutio and out of a sudden it went down, um, for, for a minute or so during the live, the, the, the live webinar. And it was just a spike of people that <sighs> we didn't expect. Um, but then obviously we, we are in the meteor, so we quickly scaled it up. And everything's back to normal and that now lesson learned. So we have a lot of notifications and like, you know, to make sure that as soon as something like that happens, it auto scales automatically. And if it needs our attention, it sends us text messages and all that sort of stuff. So um, we're on top of it now. Yeah. So it was just a spike. I, I, do you know what? I think nobody doesn't go through that, do they? If you're launching yeah. a, a SaaS app and you, wow, 700 people on the line is a pretty large amount. And 700 people, you know, pinging your server infrastructure. That's going to that's going to cause problems if you've never had that before. So you just press the auto scale button and you you're good. Everything's back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um how was AppSumo? You know, uh, without question, I would say the majority of the people in our community um are looking at that thing quite often and there's deals that come along um where you know i'm interested in this i'm not interested in that but quite a few of us are suckers for it you know we just buy <laughs> everything um how how was the experience is it one that you would recommend to people did it work for your business or did you, did you just get flooded with people who then ended up refunding and were unhappy or asked too much uh it was an absolutely amazing experience nathan um we Basically, yes, we, we had type of people who refunded, um, who um, expected more, um, who who joined us, you know, from the very start and stuck with us, even though the platform was a little bit buggy at its early stages. So we had, you know, all type of people. Um, and but the, the main thing from AppSumo is brought to, brought to us um, a community, 
that really cares about you know us founders and good product and um from that community i've managed to truly polish up plutio and fix as many bugs as it possibly can um in a short period of time because everyone's testing everyone is using it on a daily basis and reporting these bugs with no hesitations and it's not like if you don't fix this box we're not going to use it it's like oh i found a bug leo um good luck fixing it you know we love plutio so that that keeps us motivated as well to providing more and to to really getting plutio to where we you know we envision it mm. so the absolute deal was absolutely amazing and it brought us it brought us good more good than than bad it's one of those like tricky things isn't it the the, the wordpress community which is where we're we're based if you like um a few years ago the model there was quite a lot of people who were charging a one off fee for their plugins whatever it might be or theme you know that you would charge it once and that's it for life um mm-hmm. a lot of them have shifted to the subscription model and and in a way that's that's what AppSumo brings you, isn't it? It brings you a, a, a load of a big audience, um, a big upswell in numbers, hopefully a lot of people who are being evangelical and helping you swell your numbers in the future. And as soon as that moment's over, you're you're back to your normal subscription. What I, I because I'm an AppSumo lucky um, lucky person to get it, I have no idea what the pricing is. What how much does it cost me to get on board with Plutio as a regular subscriber? Well, right now it starts um, ten pounds for the solo plan, and then it goes fifteen to the studio plan, and twenty to the team plan. And the only thing we limit you so the, the difference between these three plans is collaboration. So solo, you can't invite anyone. It's designed for you. Um, and then studio is designed if you want to work with clients, invite them to Plutio, collaborate with them. And team is if you know as a freelancer you could work with other contractors. With you might have a small team, then you just sign up for the team plan. Um, so it, it sort of it grows as you grow as well, and it adapts to, to 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 all the levels, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, that that's exactly the sort of price point that everybody everybody's in at, isn't it? But um, yeah, that seems great. And the fact that you got a presumably you did AppSumo uh, in order to just sort of swell the swell the coffers, swell the amount of money so that you could develop it future uh, in the future. And that leads me, I suppose, to my. So my next question is how, now that you've done this, you've built this to scratch your own itch, you've got all the stuff in there that you know you wanted and hopefully now it's bug free. I should say Leo was very honest at the beginning as we were talking before we recorded, he said, you know, um, there's a few bugs and I said, I've not had any bugs. I use it as a, on a daily basis and I literally have found not a single one. Um, how do you know what you're going to build next? I, I don't mean tell us what you're going to build next. I literally mean how, how do you find out? what you're going to be building next because you know there's a lot of people in here who make plugins and things and probably probably good to use your experience to learn how, how you communicate with your audience very good question now obviously as you know now plutio is born out of frustration out of experience so i sort of have an idea of what i need as a freelancer as a designer as a creative that i need in a tool so i, I have like 10 years experience or so of what i actually needed if that makes sense mm-hmm. but also um we all have our own personal opinions and that's why building a community around the tool or product or service is extremely important to, in today's time so that's why we've built we, we did our best to build a community um around Plutio, and now we have about two thousand active members in the community that daily share ideas inspiration um their their use cases their needs the things they um, struggle with on daily basis and so we take that into um into account when we design our roadmap and we made our roadmap completely public so even even the bugs even the issues um you know critical it might be or small it might be it's in there it's publicly available for anyone to see and you'll be able to see what we're going to be working on what we're planning what we've done um all out there because that will help us to determine what actually you know that's what that, that's what we have in mind and is that right guys is that is that what you actually want and so we keep on getting this feedback and you know altering or pivoting our roadmap to sort of match the demand if that yeah. makes sense. yeah i'm in the um you know i'm i'm in that community and to to, to be 
perfectly fair to you. I don't contribute much to it. I just sort of sit and watch. But I, I really like that way of doing things, um, asking the community what you need and having having a, a number that you can count, you know, 2,000 is, is quite nice, isn't it? When you get to the size of like we've got a million users, I guess it becomes almost impossible to to know what they need. But um, asking your users and you've got 2,000 people of which a proportion will reply and the, the other proportion uh, will just, you know, not not respond to that is quite nice because you know that you're going to be doing the right thing by the majority that are actually using it. So I guess that leads to the next question, which I'm personally quite interested in. What what do you have on the on the roadmap? Um, oh, so, uh, I've, got a, <laughs> I've got some inkling about this, actually. So go on, hit us. Okay, so what we've got on the roadmap now, our, our vision is is extremely well. It's ambitious, but it's not impossible. It's doable, and um, for it's it's split into phases. Phase one is this year. So by the end of this year, we go we're going to basically provide you with truly everything you'll ever need. So this month, April, we're launching white label. We're launching proposals and contracts. Um, custom fields for projects, for people, so you can really, truly make Plutio work the way you work. Um, we're doing a lot of improvements, tons and tons of bug fixes, and introducing our brand new API. We've actually rebuilt Plutio completely to be ABI-based, and that means very soon you'll be able to integrate Plutio into your workspace, into your, into your workflow, into the other tools that you use and that you can't sort of you know, move away from. Um, and in the coming months, we're going to be developing a brand new inbox experience to, you know, to be like instant messaging built into with emails and built into your projects and tasks. So it's all come together now under one roof. Recurring payments, documents and files, leads management, form builder to capture to capture submissions from your website or third party websites, um, automation. And this is going to be huge because then it, you're going to be able to automate everything Plutio offers. You know, there is Zabier and there and there is um, if that then that, and it'll be very similar to that concept, but within Plutio, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So we also have scheduling, um, and we're gonna hopefully introduce um a no account collaboration feature at the end of the year at the end of the year, which will basically allow you to collaborate with your clients mainly without the need for them to create an account, and that's gonna be a game changer. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that we hate as a freelancer or freelancers is inviting our clients into different tools, signing them up, you know, teaching them how to use them. And, 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 and that's what we're trying to do at the end by giving you, like enhancing the experience dramatically to, to, to allow you to collaborate without the need to go through all that hassle, if that makes sense. Yeah, that really makes a lot of sense. So basically you're throwing the kitchen sink at us. Um, <laughs> The, the last couple of years that you've been working on this, yeah. presumably, um, you know, you've got very excited at various times and, yeah, we're going to do this. And, and then, you know, you start on it and sometimes it sort of holds up. Has that informed your roadmap? Do, do you think your timeframes are, are doable, achievable, or are you are you more of the, yeah, let's just say um, we'll, we'll have this by the end of the year and we'll work damn hard to do it, but, you know, it's aspiration. Or have you meticulously mapped all of this out? You know, if if you have a, there is a saying. You know, if you have a if a good if you have a good team and good people around you, then you can get it done. Yeah, and that's true. Um, my team is absolutely brilliant, especially Dovi Das, who's been with me from early stages, and he's he's as passionate and as dedicated as me, and that makes all the difference in the world. Mm. Um, and obviously, Melvin has just joined us um, very recently, and. He's just getting as excited as us, so it's it's getting there. Yeah. But it's um I'm blessed that everyone that joins our team it just, you know, gets sunk with us into this crazy life of Plutio, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Where are what? you where where are you guys based? Are you a remote team? Is it like you in the UK, they're over there and or do you all sit in an office at the same time? No offices. We're trying to do things differently. Mm. Um so everyone work from the comfort of their home on the beach, wherever they want. Um, and I'm, I'm actually planning to keep it that way. Um, give give everyone freedom. So if you want to work on a weekend, you can. There is no actual weekends or um, anything like that in in our, in our world, if that makes sense. But you can yep. take any time you know time off whenever you want. You can you can work whenever you want, just as 
as, as long as you can get the job done, basically, mm, mm. Uh, or however way you want. And I think this is how it's going to go for a long time to come. Yeah. And so where, where you're at, you're in the UK and the others are, where are they? Um, Latvia and Philippines. Cool. Yeah, that's really all over the world, isn't it? And what does that call, do you do you use um, use Plutio to uh, to organise your own stuff? Oh yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say no. We use Asana. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, that would be hysterical. That would be a really nice moment. I bet that was a really lovely moment. The day that you actually started to use Plutio to design Plutio. You know, that, there must have been a moment in time. Where it's like, oh, I can use this now. <laughs> Exactly. It's you know by the end of this year we're going to be able to use Plutio to run Plutio completely, and that is going to be like, wow. I, I, I'm I'm not sure if you know anyone like it's very rare for anyone to experience this, but yeah, it's it's, it's it was amazing. Yeah, maybe. yeah, I'll bet. I mean, I build websites, and and I I love moments in that where you know you get the you get that moment of oh it's finished or that's that's <coughs> it I've done that bit or or yeah. God that thing which I've really struggled to do for ages is now finished. Great. Um, but I can imagine a whole SaaS product coming together must be lovely. Um, so yeah, Plutio, it, it's a perfect fit for me. Um, I, I would genuinely wouldn't be saying that. I'm not. Those people that listen to me, uh, hopefully, realise that uh, that is that is me. Uh, I, I try to be as honest as possible, um, and I genuinely do use this on a daily basis. I'm staring at it now, and it's got about 16 <laughs> things that apparently I've got to do by the end of today which is utterly unrealistic. I need to manage that a little bit better. Um, so go check it out. I would encourage you to do it. It's Plutio, P-L-U-T-I-O dot com. Uh, and you can find out all the details there. If anybody in the group would like me to show them around, so long as you, uh, you know, you don't st- deal my email addresses and things that's fine I will happily do a little uh, demo video or something for anybody that wants to see what's actually in there at the moment more than happy um, but yeah I would just like to say thanks to thanks to Leo for coming on today and talking to us about Plutio I appreciate it thanks Leo well, thank you very much for having me Nathan it was absolutely brilliant to be in my very first broadcast yay <laughs> yay I bet you do loads more after this <laughs> all right see you soon see you soon Today's ending fact comes from knockknockmarketing.com and it's more mind-blowing facts because we I think we've got addicted to these, haven't we? Well, <laughs> let's be honest. We do like to blow your mind with these facts, <laughs> which are utterly breathtaking. We, uh, yeah. we, we know that you're all holding on to the edge of your seats right now. Here it comes. Go for it, David. Well, it is that more than half of small businesses spend nothing on SEO, and they they're given the it's as sorry they're given it as fifty four percent. But there's a further seventeen percent that just spend one to ninety nine dollars. And the interesting thing I think is that thirty three percent expect to be on the first page of Google. That was the sound of me falling off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> that no quite seriously um it is bizarre isn't it the sort of disconnect between what people believe google is is out to do and what what it is actually out to do i have to say it's been a long long time since i got the ridiculous email of kind of uh you know the website's been up for a couple of weeks now when can we expect to be on the top of google Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to have moved beyond that. But it is quite amazing that nobody spends SEO. It's one of those things that everybody's dead keen at at the beginning when you build a project. They want to know it's SE- you know, that the SEO has been taken care of. Mm. But um, it, it feels to me still as if we're in that period of you just build it once and that's your SEO done. Thanks a lot. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the thing. And actually, most of the people that I know don't even talk about it. They only talk about it after it. So it wasn't one of their requirements mm. when we're doing the site it sort of comes afterwards it's a bit of a boring subject really isn't it it's a hard one to sell it's it's even more disinteresting to talk about um (laughs) on an ongoing basis do you um do you what do you do with all this oh i don't know i'm still working it out we don't talk about it and then and then they we find that somebody's gone and hired somebody from an email that they've received ah yes oh that uh, yeah that joyous (laughs) moment when you realize there's another account that's been created and it's some SEO company. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Right. Yeah, so that's interesting. Thank you for that. I am slowly but surely getting myself back up off the floor. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've just 
<laughs> brought down the whole episode with that one. No, it's good. No, it's very, very good. But, you know, go and look at the infographic. Oh, yes, we like a good infographic. Right, we're done. I'm going to say sayonara, goodbye. Go and subscribe at wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. And I keep saying it, go and check out the deals page at wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. And I will make some horribly cheesy music come in right about now. And apart from that, it's only for me to say thanks for listening yet again. And goodbye from me, Nathan Wrigley. And goodbye from me, David Wormsey. Goodbye. Bye-bye.